If you're struggling with algebra because stuff is confusing, just doesn't make sense, this video is for you. So if you're already comfortable with the idea of solving for x, meaning you only have one equation and one unknown, and you can do that, and then you get stuck on, well, now you've got more than one unknown. You've got x and y. How do you handle that? So that's called systems of linear equations. That's what we're going to do right now. In this video, by the end of this video, you will be able to have three different methods for solving these systems of linear equations under your belt. You'll feel happy and confident that you have them. Let's go ahead and get started right now. How many unknowns do you see? You have an x and a y. Does x, is that the same number as y? Not necessarily. They could be. They, they represent different things. The number of shoes you have and the number of hats you have. Okay, so we don't know what those numbers are. If you have two unknowns, you must have two equations in order to find a solution. So look at the top equation. If I put x on the other side, can you see how this will become y equals minus x plus 2? Give me a smile if you, you're good so far. We good so far? Okay, good. Perfect. Love it. All right. I know. It's always, <laughs> I have to say, I wish we were in person. That way you and I could, like, joke around more. <laughs> and I could see what you're, and think, and we could, have, we could talk more. It's always a challenge online. All right. I want to solve this for y. How do you want to do that? How do you want to do that? We have to say y equals something. So, do you want to put x over here or y over here? Do you want to throw everything over and then multiply by negative 1? Do whatever you need to do and tell me what is the final result here. Get y by itself. Get y by itself. Okay. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm going to plus y and I'm going to say minus 1. Okay, and then my equal sign is here. So I'm going to have y, because the 1's go away, equals, the y goes away, 2x minus 1. Did you get the same as me? So we have y is equal to minus x plus 2. So plug in x equals 0, and what do we get? y is equal to positive 2. So, okay, so for x value and a y value, okay, the y-intercept is 2. And then when I put in a 1 for x, I got a 1 for y. Okay, So 1 for x, 1 for y. Okay, And then I can do it again. If I put in a minus 1, what do I get? Minus 1 turns this into a plus 1, so y is going to be 3. Okay, And Doug went over a lot of this in class last week. So I have three, and that's enough for a line. If you want it, so that's the way to do it with by picking points. If you want to do it the kind of the shortcut way, y equals mx plus b. So what you do is you take the b value and put it here. And then this says rise over run. So what you're going to do is you're going to fall one over one. Fall one over one. Fall one over one, right, because it's a minus. And we went over this in graphing in, in the previous unit. Good. All right, so we have enough to make a line now. Okay. All right, and there's our red line. Okay, great. Now we have another equation. I'm going to call that y is equal to 2x minus 1. This was equation number 2 on the other page. Okay, so let's do it the y equals mx plus b. Okay, so the y-intercept is minus 1. So for x is 0, y is minus 1, so it's right there. Okay, so stay there. 2x, so 2 is the slope, which is equal to rise over run. Okay, and that means you're going to hold on to this minus 1 here, and then you're going to say 2, you're going to go up 2, and then over 1. Oh, it happens to be the same one. And then go up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1. Okay, because 2 is the same as 2 over 1. Okay, so we're going up 2. So this is the slope. Okay, I know this is a little bit of a repeat from last week, but that's okay, or the past two weeks, but we want to make sure that this is really making sense. Okay, all right, and here is your second one. So what do these lines mean? Okay, so it means that for any x value, you can find the y somewhere along this red line. For any value of x, 
y will be somewhere along this line, one place. So if x is 0, y is there. If x is 100, y is like way up there. There is one value of x and one value of y that will lie on both lines. That is the solution, which is right here, which is 1 comma 1. So for x equals 1, y equals 1. So wherever these two lines intersect, that is the solution to this system of linear equations. This is where you're going, oh, so if I only give you one, you can tell me that um, for any, for, if I give you a value of x, you could tell me what y is. But you couldn't tell me what x and y are because there's, there's two unknowns and only one equation. To nail that second value down, you need a second equation. And so what we do is we, draw, we graph both lines, and we want to know where is the spot where both of these cross. And that tells you for a value of x equals 1 and y equals 1. So I have a 1 equals minus 1 plus 2. And then you can see that this is true, because one, if I take 2 and subtract 1, I get 1. So that's a true statement. So this is, the second one is 1 equals 2 times 1 minus 1. So 1 equals 2 minus 1, that's also a true statement. So this, there is one set of coordinates that will make both of these statements true. Anybody seen a limitation with this, by the way? Sometimes we do need to graph stuff. Like I showed you with, um, when I was showing my jet engine um, test results, we did need to plot that, right? And sometimes you do need to plot stuff because your data points are all over the place and you need a best fit line. That's just what we do. Um, but for the most part, we don't. Um, a lot of times in physics and in engineering, you're going to get equations that you're going to have two different equations, one maybe for temperature, one for the diameter of, say we're talking about, oh, I don't know, black holes or something like that. Um, and you don't have to plot them to find the answer. You can just do it with numbers, which is really great because uh, one of the problems is if you don't have graph paper, the accuracy of your solution is how accurate you can actually draw the lines. Are you seeing that? Yeah, you want a, a more accurate solution. Okay, so the reason we do graphing first is so you can kind of see where we're going with the numbers. I'm going to show you a method. I'm going to show you two methods. One is kind of a shortcut if it works out, which is not most of the time. And the second one is the sledgehammer crowbar that will work every single time. Okay, so let's do the, hey, if it works out with the numbers, use this one. It's a lot faster. Okay, so let's do that. So the first one is called elimination, like a, a game elimination. Okay, elimination. All right, and the second one's called substitution. All right, so let's do elimination. Suppose you have two equations. All right, so write this down. Okay, so we have two equations. Now, how many of you guys like puzzles? Anybody like puzzles? Maybe like jigsaw or maybe like secret codes? Yeah. So doesn't this look like a puzzle that can kind of go together with numbers in a way? What if you draw a line here and you put a little plus sign here? Am I allowed to do that? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun stuff we can do in math you didn't think you could get away with. All right, so, so let's do that. Let's just add the equations together. x plus x is, yep, 2x plus 1y minus 1y. I am liking that. That is a 0y. This is not oi, it's, it's 0. <laughs> so you can cross it out equals, what's 4 plus 2? 6. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? 2x equals 6. How do we get x by itself? You guys are experts at this by now. Experts. You divide by whatever's in front of the x. That's right. x equals 6 divided by 2 is 3. Did that look easy? <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, what is y? What is y equal to? Who can tell me what y is equal to? What do you have to do? Pick either one and throw this in it. Okay, so I'll do it in another color. So I'm going to say x minus y equals 2. I'm going to put a 3 in here. It'll work with both of these, right? Because the values for x and y have to work for both. I'm going to put a 3 in there. So that means I have a 3 minus y equals 2. 3 minus what equals 2? Can you just tell me without even solving for it? Yeah, you can do this one and just say y equals 1. So x equals 3, y equals 1. All right, so this works. So elimination simply means you can draw a line under both of them, and one of them cancels out easily like that. 
That's all that means. Mm -hmm. And so there will be one of these methods you're like, oh yeah, that's the one I want to do. Okay. And for a lot of people, this is the one that makes sense. Okay. So you'll have something like this. Now you could do elimination on this one, sure. All right, but here's what I want you to do. You, find, you set one of the equations, whichever one is easiest for you to work with, okay? This one looks messy to me. The top one looks messy, would you agree? Big number, yeah, okay. Bottom one looks easier. You solve it for whichever one is easiest to solve for. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking if I just plus y and plus y, I can rewrite number 2 to be x equals y minus 2. That looks good to me. Then, you guys are good at stuffing, right? Stuffing things, stuffing clothes and drawers and stuff, making it look like your room's neat. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this and stuff it into there. You're going to substitute it. So let's write, write it out so it's nice and clear. So I'm going to say 3 times x. What is x? x is this thing. y minus 2. Remember, you got to take the whole thing, not just the y. So 3 times x. x is equal to y minus 2. So put that in there. Then keep moving. Plus 2y equals 24. All right, stop right there. How are we doing? Did you guys see how we just substituted? We put x in there. This is the equation number 1. We just rewrote equation 1 but we included equation number two and shoved it in. Yeah. <laughs> Stuffing at Christmas, oh boy. All right, so now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna multiply it out, 3y. If you're gonna make a mistake, usually it's because you're trying to multiply this out and isolate y at the same time. Okay, do it in two steps, right nice and big. Three times y minus three times two, minus two is a minus six. Okay, so this is three y minus 6, and then just rewrite this. Now combine. Okay, so I can't tell you how many, so I told this to my daughter the other day. She's in Algebra 1 right now, and she's like, yeah, 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 Mom. So I'm old hat to my kids. My kids are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever do that, the yeah, yeahs? She's like, oh, Mom, I got it. And she went round and round, and finally she goes, okay, Mom, I need help. And this is what she, she tried to multiply and then um, isolate variables in her head. So I'm saying, write it out just until you get comfortable with this. And as you get more advanced, you'll be able to do it in your head. But initially, write it out. 3y plus 2y, okay, equals, I'm going to say plus 6 and plus 6. 24 and 6 is 30. These two combined to give you 5y equals 30. Divide by whatever's in front. And the y is equal to 30 divided by 5, which is 6. How are we doing here? Okay, we're writing. Okay, good, good. Do you see how much easier it is now to solve for x? If I said, what is x? You already have an equation for what x is. x is equal to y minus 2. So just say x equals y minus 2. I'm just copying it from above, so it's all on the same screen. Okay. And then y is 6, so you say x is equal to 6 minus 2. x is equal to 4. Somebody's asking, are the solutions always so nice? <laughs> no. Um, because this is new, we keep these as whole numbers, so you're comfortable. You don't have to worry about um, decimal numbers or fractions. When you get to engineering and science classes and biology classes and chemistry classes, these are going to be messy decimal numbers. But just know for now, for when we start, it's always nice big numbers like this, nice whole numbers. Then when you get to astronomy, <laughs> astronomy has huge numbers. Okay, how are you feeling about the substitution method? Which method do you like? I like this one because it's straightforward. But it, can you see if I just showed you this, you might get lost in numbers initially? You don't like this one. Okay, that's all right. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, so it's good to see graphically what we're doing. If we graphed both of these, their intersection would be at 4, 6. That would be the place where these two lines cross. All right, let's do a couple more so you're comfortable. Okay, so this is easier. All right, how about, and you guys can race me to the answer. Absolutely, if you're feeling like, oh, I think I can do this faster than Aurora, please do. 2x minus 3y equals 16. x plus y over 2 equals 0. Blech. right? Okay. So, what do you think? 
which one should we do first? Which one is going to be easier to manipulate? Getting one in terms of the other. I think this one. I think number two is going to be easier because this one you got a 16 and then you got a coefficient, you have to divide, and there goes three, does not divide evenly. So I would vote for this guy. I would say x equals, and just put this on the other side, minus y over 2. And if this is a weird format, just think of it as minus 1 half y. Okay? That's the same thing. Okay, so now what do we do? Now what we do is we take this x, this minus 1 half y, and we stuff it in here. Sometimes you'll solve for y, sometimes you'll solve for x. It could be either one. It's up to you. It'll work and you'll get the same answer if you're careful. Okay, so I'm going to put, and this is how I write it, 2 into 1. So this is equation 2 stuffed into 1. 2 times x, x is equal to minus 1 half y minus 3y equals 16. Okay, yes, we actually are almost done. Good question. Okay, so what's 2 times a half? If you have two halves, you have a you have a whole, right? And the minus sign is going to stay here because there's only one of them. Minus y minus 3y equals 16. Okay, and let me back this up a little bit so you can see the whole thing as we progress here. There we go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think I hit it too hard. Boing! I got a new camera. I've been trying it out. I actually like it pretty well. Okay, um, so minus 1 minus 3 is a minus 4 equals 16. Divide both sides by whatever's in front of the y, including that minus sign. This will give me y, oops, okay. y is equal to, there's only one minus sign over here, so it minus 4. All right, bonus points. Who can tell me for the frosting on the donut, instead of just a plain donut, what is x equal to? What is x equal to? Oh, and then I have a funny story. Can I, do you guys mind a couple stories today? Do you mind? I didn't think, oh, you do mind? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. No, you don't mind. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you the story about the flying donuts and the flying batteries. Okay, um, so minus, did you figure out what x is? x is equal to minus 1 half y, which is minus 4. You just put it in. Okay, so x is equal to Two minuses make a plus. Four over two makes a two. So on the coordinate plane, it's two comma minus four. That's your solution. So I can get the whole thing there. Good. How are you feeling about substitution now? Are you seeing the logical steps? We had two equations. Yeah? Oh, you are. Good. Excellent. You have two equations. You, write, you just find the one that's easier to work with. You find one in terms of the other variable. And then you're going to take, oh, somebody's worried about the two equal signs. So um, this, let me just rewrite it. X is equal to minus one half Y. Okay, that's what this is. This is equation number two, rewritten. Okay. All right, so we took this and we substituted it in where there was an X. See? Two times this thing, X minus three Y equals 16. So we just substitute, you just shove it in. And then you multiply it out, 2 times minus 1 half gives you a minus 1. There's a minus 1 hidden here. Minus 3y is here, equals 16. And then you just, we call it plugging and chugging. <laughs> you just plug and chug until you get to the answer. So if this made sense and you like this type of learning, this is an excerpt from, just a small little sample, from my math program. So this math program covers fractions, decimals, percent, geometry, pre-algebra and algebra, as well as statistics and probability. So it takes students from about fourth grade all the way up through eighth grade so they are ready for high school math. In fact, they're more than ready. If you'd like to learn more about my program, it's at superchargedmath.com. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can reach me at my personal email, which is aurora at superchargedscience.com, and I will see you in class.